Hey y'all and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. We are going to be doing another Try It Tuesday where we are painting small but thinking big and learning big skills. So we are going to be focusing on leaves today. So uh, a lot of folks who are just beginning in watercolor will gravitate towards botanicals and florals as well as the greenery that goes with it. And leaves can be really tricky for folks sometimes and you have to practice them. Not only do you have to practice creating leaf shapes, but also get your brain to really start thinking about different types of leaf shapes so that way you can have a really diverse range uh, of textures and colors when you are creating floral bouquets and things like that. So with that being said, we are going to practice our leaf shapes, but we are not going to do it the traditional way. So a lot of times I see when um, either myself, I've done this before um, in classes, either online and in person, and lots of other artists, they will do um, individual pieces and you'll practice that piece over and over again and you'll do it kind of in its own space on your paper and practice and practice and you'll use up a lot of paper this way and a lot of sheets. Well, we are all about painting small for this and not using a lot of paper and that way we can use maybe a higher quality paper um, and not be afraid to mess it up in any way or waste it because like we paint on it for you know a minute and a half, two minutes and then we're completely done with the whole piece of paper. We're not going to do that. We are going to take this idea and we're going to apply it to something that I'm calling. I just made this up, I think. Um, if someone else has done it, let me know. Um, but leaf collaging. So what that means is like in collage where you layer things on top of each other, you layer textures to create something new. Uh, we're going to be practicing by layering because we can still practice our shapes one on top of the other. There's nothing that says that we have to put them next to each other. Um, so you can see up here at the top of my paper, I've already done this a couple of times and I'm going to continue to kind of fill these boxes and create different types of leaf collages where I'm layering lots and lots of different shapes, colors, textures on top of each other while I'm practicing my shapes. Um, and these come out really great. These are a lot of fun. And you'll notice that I'm not always using traditional foliage colors that you might find um, in your traditional kind of bouquets and botanicals. I'm not just using various shades of greens and green blues. I'm adding in purples and yellows and magentas. You can certainly find these things in different botanicals in the foliage pieces. Um, but they're not as common and a lot of people don't paint them all the time, but I'm just going to pick colors because I like color combinations, not because that I'm trying to mimic any particular leaf um, that occurs in real life out there. So with that being said, let's get started. So I am working on uniquely today. Um, all of the videos up until now for the Try It Tuesdays have been in my B watercolor sketchbook, but I have filled that sketchbook and I've actually taken a large sheet or a large piece of Arsh or Arches watercolor paper and I've divided it into 15 different squares. So I'm gonna get 15 different small paintings out of this. So a lot of people are afraid to use their arch paper, their arches paper, and they don't wanna practice on their arch paper. But this is a great way to practice on one piece of paper for a really long time and get a lot out of it. So this was about $2 for this piece. Um, and you're gonna get 15 different opportunities to make lots and lots of layers of leaf shapes on here and then um, you know you should feel pretty confident after that to start to create your um, botanicals on finished pieces all right so I'm using my core watercolor palette here um, I have lots of colors in here that I'm going to dip into and I'll go over them as I kind of create this piece. I'm using my size 10 Velvet Touch Princeton brush and I also have a size 4 Princeton Select on hand if I want to do some smaller um, designs. And my water and my coffee of course and hopefully my paint doesn't end up in my coffee. Here's my delicious coffee. Uh, I'm going to take a sip right now. Okay. 
and we are going to get started. So I'm actually not going to do this box up here right now. I'll do that later. It's going to drive some of you absolutely bananas that I'm not finishing this row, but I'm going to start down here. I plan to finish this whole page with all different versions of this. So I'm not worried about doing it in the exact order, but I'm going to scooch this up and zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm going to try to incorporate a few different camera angles too in this video so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But the first thing I'm going to do, if you have never, ever, ever, ever painted a leaf before, I'm not really going to go over individual, really close up like brush strokes in this one. So there are some other videos you can look at for that. But I am going to go over just incorporating different shapes and then the layering process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to start with green. I'm going to start with a little sap green. I'm going to make it really light. I don't want to go super dark on my first layer. And I'm going to use my brush and I'm just going to make kind of a traditional viney leaf. And then I'm just going to start putting in some of these medium sized leaf shapes here. The biggest thing I think, or one of the things that trips people up often when creating the leaf shapes and wanting to do it in like one or two strokes is that you don't have enough water or paint on your brush and then you get dry spots in your leaves instead of getting a nice smooth kind of surface like this um, that or you have way too much water on your brush which is actually kind of hard to do if you have a pretty good brush um, and that too much pools out at the end and you have like really big blobs of water at the end so just thinking about that and playing with that um, the other thing so too much or too little water so if you're getting dry spots get more water and more um, paint on your brush really get it saturated and let me see, I'm going to scooch this over so you can also see my palette in the frame. There we go. Nice creamy. Adding more water. Um, the other thing is that often when creating, especially a shape like this, is lifting up the brush too early. So I guess I am going to demonstrate just a little bit. Um, and I'm going to change the camera angle for this one. Okay, welcome, nice and close here. Uh, let's zoom out just a little bit, but so you can really kind of see what I'm doing. So lifting up the brush too early. So I'm gonna go into this box over here and we're just gonna create another similar one to the last one we did. Don't worry, we'll get into lots of other shapes. Um, so just creating a long vine here, just to practice a lot of leaves. So a lot of folks will start, will push down and they'll get, to, they'll drag and then they'll lift up and they get this truncated kind of cut off end here. Rather than, I'm gonna go right over the top of the same one I already did, dragging and slowly lifting up so that the end of the brush, you see that, is kind of the last thing to touch the page. So just keeping that in mind, and if you like to widen your leaves, you just go over to the side of it and make another stroke right next to it. And there's nothing that says you have to do your leaves all in one or two strokes. You can certainly kind of create your leaf shape like this and fill it in. You'll get more puddling usually when you do it this way. What you can do, dab off your brush and just pick up some of that water and then you have a nice flat kind of, um, you don't have any puddling there that's going to create some weird shapes later on. All right, so this is great for if you mess this up, you get puddling, you just move on to the next leaf. You just keep going, keep practicing. And from each one deciding, oh, I really like that. That came out exactly how I thought it was going to come out. Or that's not quite what I was thinking. And I'm going to try again. I'm going to observe what I did and do something different. Okay, so there's a bunch of leaves. Let's back it up again so we can go full frame. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna start um, adding in different colors and different shapes of leaves. You could certainly just keep practicing this type of leaf over and over again. I'm gonna pick up some of this purple. It's a little dioxazine purple with a little green in it. So it's making this kind of dusty 
colored purple. I'm going to add lots of water. I want it to be nice and light. And this one's dry now because I didn't use a ton of water. I didn't leave any big puddles on them, so it's nice and dry. And I'm going to do... So one of the other things that um, when creating leaves and foliage, people get stuck in one shape and they'll just make this shape over and over and over again. But if you're doing like a bouquet or something and you want to change up the type of leaf, you sometimes have to pause for a second and stop yourself to be like, okay, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to let my muscle memory take over. It's always hard with my palette on this side because then I have to like put my hand in it. Um, but I do want you to see it. All right, so this one, we're going to do some branching leaves off of it. And I'm going to make them so, like larger kind of globular. So I'm starting at the top on these and hooking around, hooking around. And then start at the bottom and do the same thing and then filling in the center. So I'm making them really wide. And you can see, look at this layering. Isn't this so much fun? Like that the transparency um, starts to build these really interesting textures and this collage kind of technique. Well, it's not really a technique, but just this collage look to it where we're layering a lot of different colors and textures to create something new. Let's see if I can do this so that you can see. I know some people are like, get your hand out of the way. I'm trying. I am not, you know, I don't have the most amazing camera cinematography set up here someday if I keep doing this and keep getting support from you all thank you thank you for watching and thank you thank you for the super thanks oh my gosh I almost forgot about the super thanks and all the folks who have contributed through super thanks thank you so so much I will make sure at the end of this video to shout you out by name uh, because they are so incredibly helpful, those little bits, um, to help me keep buying supplies and support the business and hopefully get better photo equipment and a better photo setup so I can have better angles in the future. All right. So that's that one. I love this. Look at this green and the purple, this dusty kind of gray purple is so fun and beautiful. And I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to work on this one. And I'm going to keep going back and forth, just adding different leaf shapes. Now the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my size four brush. Um, and again, going back to this. So you can do these same things, trying to get yourself to push yourself to make lots of different shapes. Um, and combinations of, you know, these leaves are pretty much the same relative shape as these, but they are smaller and interspersed differently on the vine. So they create a whole different look and feel. Um, so just remembering that, let's add some smaller ones that are kind of more, I'm going to use some magenta to this purple. I'm going to take this purple, add some magenta. So that's a fun color. And I'm gonna use my smaller brush so I can do smaller leaves. I'm gonna do one here. So these big leaves, but then off of it, I'm gonna do lots of small leaves. And this is where you can play with opacity of your paint and lightness and value. If it's like, oh, these are too dark, let me add water and see what that looks like to get like a lighter shade. That's too much water, I'm getting big globs. Let's pull some of that off. And then keep going. So this is really light compared to the other ones. And you can experiment with like your layering. So the big thing is when you paint an actual bouquet of something, or if you're painting like foliage, like in a, in a bouquet setup or a floral arrangement or something like that, most likely you're trying to paint it, you know, somewhat realistically, things are going to overlap. Things are actually, when you get to the actual piece, it's going to be more like this collaging than anything. It's going to have pieces bunched together where things are overlapping and you're going to have to decide you know, what do you want to come to the foreground? What's going to be darkest? What's going to be more transparent or translucent? 
Um, how do you plan that out? So this is a great way to start understanding what things are going to look like together. And you can definitely use the colors that you want to use in a larger piece in this practice. So that way you know how things work together. I'm just enjoying playing with lots of different colors I normally wouldn't put in a piece. All right, I'm going to pick up some yellow of some kind. Um, actually, I'm going to pick up some raw sienna, which is like a yellow gold color. I'm going to do that on this one. I think everything is dry. If you are layering, you do generally want things to dry first, but if they don't, you could also get some fun effects too of bleeding, stuff bleeding into each other. So yellow and purple don't always mix great. They sometimes create um, their complementary colors, so they'll create browns, which I think is great in this context because we're going for like earth tone colors. As long as things are dry, it's not going to turn into a big muddy mess. You're going to see these little peaks of bright yellow and then overlapped with the purple, making a more earth tone color. And again, this is just practice. This We're not necessarily turning this and this particular one into a final piece, but you certainly could. You could do this as a whole piece in and of itself. I'll show you a sample while we let things dry of something I did in my sketchbook that wasn't really meant to be painted tiny, but it was playing around with color. And there we go. Look at that one. And then as you build up layers, you can choose different textures that might be smaller um, or just different that really stand out. So let's let that one dry. And then I have an idea for adding some something more like this, like pine or spruce on top of it in a really like dark, brighter color that will really kind of stand out. I think that'll be interesting over here. I'm going to add some phthalo blue, I think. But I've kind of like gotten it into this orangey color here. So it's um, actually making it a little less um, saturated. It's desaturating it. So it's not as strong. That worked out well. That worked out well. So we could do that here. We could add, or actually, no, I'm going to do some long, like, I'm going to do a big, Add some more water to my brush. And I'm gonna do a big kind of swoop across. And then I'm gonna do these more, oh, this brush isn't gonna work. It's not, it doesn't hold enough water for me. So I'm gonna to switch to my larger brush for what I wanna do. Cause I wanna, I need to hold a good amount of paint and water. I'm gonna do these longer kind of wavy leaves. This actually reminds me of I think it's called Chinese Chinese stilt grass or Japanese stilt grass. Japanese stilt grass, which we have in our yard. It's actually a highly invasive species and it grows super fast. But it's these long, like these big, tall, reedy. So look at here. Do you see that? I did not have enough water and or paint in my brush. And I ran out like in mid-stroke. So... That's what that looks like. And I'm going to do an offshoot over here. And things are starting to get, you know, you can't see all of the different distinctions between the shapes. You could definitely go darker. Let's go darker with this. Now, normally I would just move on from this and not worry about it, but I'm going to go darker on what I just did. It's probably going to do some weird things because not everything is dry yet and I'm adding more paint and water to something that's like slightly damp. But I just wanted to go darker so you could really see the shape of this. And that's kind of the stuff that you learn. You're like, oh, that's going to really blend in. I really need to go with a darker, more saturated pigment if I'm doing it on top. So I just went over everything I just did, but basically, so there's that shape of leaf, but it's still transparent. You can still kind of see through it um, to what's going on below. 
All right, let's finish up with these over here. And then I think we'll be done for our experimentation. You could do this for hours. I could do this for hours. I probably will do this for hours. All right, I'm gonna pick some magenta up, some darker magenta, like these. And I am going to do some spruce um, or pine. Hmm. I'm going to do some spruce, but I'm going to do it kind of smaller in the corner here. And that's still a little wet there. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to just start at the top doing little stipple dot, 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 dot. Let's zoom in for this and change the angle. All right, here we are down nice and close. You can see how this was still wet here, so that bled out. And I'm sure when I touch it again, it's gonna do even more. So depending on, you know, how finicky you're gonna get, you might wanna wait a little bit longer for things to dry. Oh, come on, come with me. And so this is like the spruce pine is you know, it's wider at the bottom. It kind of comes up to a point at the top. But it does have its own like individual little branches that come off a central twiggy area. Again, you can, you can just make this up. It doesn't have to be super realistic. There's some kind of foliage out there that looks like this. Maybe not in pink, unless they've dyed it. Put something out there. All right. We're going to leave that. And then I'm also going to take, mm, I don't know, some aqua or cobalt teal. I'll water that way down. Way down. This is a very um, opaque color. Actually, more, maybe more some more um, dioxazine purple. Let's do that. And water it down a little bit. And I'm going to try to avoid that because it's already quite wet. And I'm going to do practice my fine tip brush strokes, some pine. And these can be super long or you can do even shorter versions. So you could do a line with really tiny, fatter little um, needles on it that aren't like the really long strokes like that. Let's zoom back out. All right, and I'm just going to finish this one up with a bunch of the original kind of standard quintessential leaf shapes. And I'm gonna pick a green, um, a yellow green, I think, right over top and water it down. And this is what I mean by, you can practice right over top. You don't have to worry about even making this look good if you're not that worried about it. I'm just practicing. I can see, you know, it doesn't look outstanding as like a finished, like I can't see that exact shape with all that's going on underneath it. But as I'm creating my brush strokes, I can tell that was a good one. That wasn't a good one. That's not what I wanted to do. You can practice pulling from the top to the bottom or pushing from the bottom to the top or bottom to top, top to bottom. And the darker you go on top, the more you'll be able to see it like we did with the blue. But if you put light on top, they'll actually almost feel like they're receding into the background. And this darker color is coming up on top. Let's let that dry. And let this dry. And we'll do one more layer and then we will be done. And you can go practice, practice, practice. All right, I'm gonna go way out of the comfort zone here 
I'm going to pick up ultramarine. I mixed it on top of this yellow. It's like a dark gray color, but it's going to be dark on top here. And I am going to do something with tiny. And you could even change up your branch color if you wanted to um, do brown branches or brown stems or twigs and then leaves in a different color. You could do that. So you can see how this darker color is still transparent enough that you it's not completely covering everything up. You can see behind there, but some of it is opaque enough that it really pulls the eye that you're not really paying attention to what is under it very much. I meant to draw more branches off of this and do smaller ones. Whoops. See, even I get into bad habits. What am I saying? Of course I get into bad habits. I am not immune to making the mistakes that I talk about. The reason I'm able to talk about them is because I make them all the time. There we go. There we go. So much fun. So much more fun, I think, than just painting a whole bunch of shapes right next to each other kind of in this whole section. So I painted multiple versions of all of these in half the amount of space. Okay, so here, let's zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out. All right, so this, these two squares are half the amount of space of this paper. Um, and I got multiple of these on there. Of course, on a larger sheet of paper, you can do the same technique and fill up the whole page and get even more space. But just to show you, you don't have to paint everything next to each other in order to practice creating leaf shapes. So thank you so much. Let's see, I, I don't wanna take the tape off the whole thing because obviously I still have more work to do and more practice to do. But let's see, um, kind of, we'll take the tape off the corner of this one. Everybody loves the tape reveal. Um, and things do look messy, um, even messier than they, they would be uh, without these clean edges. But I'm excited to finish this whole piece and then have these little vignettes um, all throughout. So look how nice and clean that looks there these little cards. I wonder if I can even cut them out and make them into like, you know, do something on the back, like a little card or something like that. They're super cute. We can zoom in there. You can kind of see some of the detail. So fun. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, to this channel if you haven't already. Um, check out the description for links to supplies as well as my social media. You can find me on Instagram. You can join Umbrella Arts Academy with Shana Searcy on Facebook as well as uh, check out my Studio Crew Classroom, which is Umbrella Arts Academy. And the Studio Crew Classroom is just additional uh, videos as well as um, lots of principles and things like that that you might need to use for either the free YouTube videos or for the videos in the Studio Crew Classroom. So that's a monthly uh, membership. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, it's such a pleasure to paint with you. Happy painting, y'all.